and those pinchers could put quite the hurt on you if you got your finger in there. And I'm sure right now you're thinking to yourself, is Coyote gonna let this crayfish pinch him? Why not? Let's see how powerful that is. That's, that's probably the right thing to do, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, do I really wanna do this? I know everybody right now is watching saying, yes, Coyote, let's see how bad that pinches. All right, here we go, ready? One, two. West Virginia is without question one of my favorite places to explore. The landscape is beautiful no matter what direction you turn, and its collection of wildlife is unbelievably diverse. Some of its creatures even appear as if they are out of this world. Several years ago, we set off into the wild alongside herpetologist Tim Brust to seek out a living alien known as the Hellbender. We got him! Woo! Oh man, yeah! Tim! That was amazing! The coaks and the net! Hailing as the largest salamander species in the New World, this giant amphibian was incredibly difficult to catch. Yet the reward was well worth it, as that video helped bring attention to the conservation work Tim and his colleagues are doing to protect West Virginia's river ecosystems. On this adventure, we are returning once again to this wild and wonderful state. Our mission is to track down and find yet another earthbound alien. Closely related to the Hellbender, it's fair to say that the mysterious being we now seek is just as elusive and even more difficult to catch. Shrouded in mystery and lore, like its larger cousins, these salamanders are seldom seen, which leads to a long list of questions. We hope to answer several. We won't be able to answer them all, but the real question I know we all want the answer to is whether or not the mud puppy is capable of barking. Now, our goal today is to head upstream to look for a good spot with mud puppies. The best spots will be flat slate-like rocks. They'll have to hide up underneath flat rocks or in crevices. So we'll search for some environmental indicators and with any luck, ultimately get our hands on a mud puppy. All right, you hook me up. Here we go. Okay, you good? Good. All right, well, let's head to the crank. The mud puppy is considered a bio-indicator or a species whose health status within the environment, especially in water, can tell scientists about the effects different pollutants are having on the ecosystem. Yikes, seems complicated, but it's really not. Think of it like this. If the water is polluted, mud puppies can't survive. So if mud puppies are present, you know it's a healthy ecosystem. Wow, this is really what you guys can't feel is all of this sand and silt. I see what you're talking about, Tim. So this is not good mud puppy spot right here because of how silty this is. They'll come out and forage in this. Uh -huh. As far as where they're hiding during the day, no. Okay. I'm trying to get B-roll of you walking through here, actually. Oh, really? I thought you were filming Tim and I'm <laughs> filming you. All right, I'll keep going. Ready? <laughs> Go for it. Like other large aquatic salamanders, the species we are searching for loves flowing water and flat rocks to den beneath. These underwater cave-like structures keep them concealed during the light of day and provide protection from predators. Our best chances of finding one will come as a result of gently lifting as many rocks as we can. How about this one? Now, the style of flipping here is to flip the rocks very, very slowly. The slower you lift them up, the less silt you will disturb. And you just let the current grab the silt and take it with it. All right, let's work our way up around this bend and flip some rocks. Okay, so we got a really good rock right here. Tim, I'm gonna hand you the net. This is a good open space. If there's a mud puppy and it goes that direction, I know you're gonna make the scoop. All right, here we go. Nothing. Wow, that looks so perfect. What you can't see on camera is there's this little cavern. Holy mackerel, crayfish, crayfish! There's a big crayfish. Holy cow, we should try to catch this. Um, if you bring the net 
right to there, we might get him. Let me see if I can scare him backwards. Wow, this one's definitely worth looking at. Got it, got it, scoop up, scoop up. Wow, those are some pretty big pinchers. Look at that. And those pinchers could put quite the hurt on you if you got your finger in there. And I'm sure right now you're thinking to yourself, is Coyote gonna let this crayfish pinch him? Why not? Let's see how powerful that is. That's, that's probably the right thing to do, right? <laughs> I think that's gonna hurt. I think it's gonna hurt too. Uh, do I really wanna do this? I know everybody right now is watching saying, yes, Coyote, let's see how bad that pinch is. He's probably gonna swing that other pinch around and get me at the same time. All right, here we go, ready? One, two, three. Ooh, ah, ah. Ooh, it's the tips that really get you the most. Ooh, there goes the second pincher. Ah, yep. You did not want to find yourself ooh, inside the tips of those pinchers. Now it's actually the tips that are the sharpest part, but this is the defense mechanism of this little crustacean. Pinch onto something if it picks me up and hopefully it will set me back down into the water and not turn me into a meal. But this crayfish is a good sign that the environment is incredibly healthy. There are little filters for the environment. So where we're finding crayfish, that means there's a good chance of finding mud puppies. All right, I'm gonna place this guy back down into the water. And with any luck, it is going to just let go of my finger and swim right back under its rock. Here we go, one, two, three. Now let go, let go, buddy. Oh, let go. Still holding on. There it goes. That crayfish definitely was capable of drawing blood. They may seem completely safe to catch, but if you get them from the wrong end, you're gonna pay for it. All right, mud puppies, let's keep searching. Searching for salamanders can be physically and mentally exhausting as you flip rock after rock after rock, only to find nothing more than a plume of silt or maybe another angry crayfish. Yet you constantly fight the urge to give up because you never know what the next twist in the river will reveal. Wow, okay, this is pretty ideal, right? Yeah, it's pretty good. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to lift this one. Let me just test it out. Oh, geez, that is a huge rod. I'm not sure I'm lifting that one, but Big Tim, you think you can lift it? I can give it a shot. Okay. Lift it slow, and with any luck, we'll find something under and I will do the scooping. Sound good? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's dark, 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 dark. I see nothing. Oh, 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 oh! I got one! Mud puppy, mud puppy! Yeah. Look at this, look at this! Yes! Right there, check it out! Right. Yes! We got a mud puppy! Okay, watch your toes, put the rock down. Let's go right up here on this flat rock. The water's completely clear. Looks like a good spot to present the mud puppy. Okay, let's do this. There's the fence slime. There we go. Okay, now like the hellbender, this salamander is gonna be really hard to present. So I'm gonna actually use my backpack as a table. I am gonna be able to take it out of the container periodically for us to get a good look at, but I wanna keep the amphibian submerged and as stress-free as possible. Let's do this to start. Let me hold it up. Wow, when it's under the water like that, you can really see those gills bloomed out to the sides. Now, the mud puppy appears as if it is stuck in a perpetual state of larva form. Most salamander species start off as larva with gills and stay beneath the water, but the mud puppy never loses those gills and is in an aquatic environment its entire life. You'll never see one of these amphibians up and out of the water, at least not if it's healthy and doing well. Now, at first when I had it in the net, for a second I thought, well, is it a mud puppy or is it a baby hellbender? You can see when it's out of the water, its gills are pressed up against the side of its head. That very flat, blunt-shaped head, which of course, like the hellbender, allows them to navigate through the environment wedging up underneath flat rocks. Now, also like the hellbender, they have these little nuptial pads on their toes. They have four toes on the back, four toes on the front, and they just slowly crawl along the basin of the stream or the river. Now, we are gonna collect some biometric data from this creature. There I go, bring it up again for you one more time. 
That is just amazing. What a bizarre amphibian. Now I can hold it up out of the water for a few seconds without causing it any harm, but I do want to continuously dip it down into the water so that it stays hydrated. And I imagine like the hellbender, they're probably also capable of absorbing some oxygen through their skin. And also like the hellbender, you can see the very rudder-like tail of this amphibian. Look at that. Obviously allows them to propel themselves forward within the water. Okay, let's bring the mud puppy up again very gently. Give me a little guy. There we go. Now, during the day, they will hide beneath rocks, obviously to stay hidden from predators. This is primarily a nocturnal species. They'll come out at night and begin to hunt. Now, it may look adorable and cute, but believe it or not, this is a voracious predator. And they'll feast upon any sort of small crayfish or invertebrate that they come across. Whether it's a worm, tadpoles, little fish, all make fair game for the mud puppy. Finding a mud puppy is incredibly exciting but it's important to put as little stress on the animal as possible. So I need to help Tim collect the biometrics as quickly as we can. First, we need to measure the length, which consists of recording snout to vent, and then a total length of snout to tail tip. Next, we need to get the salamander's weight. Last, and most important, is a DNA sample. Taken as a small sliver of skin from the tail, it will contain an incredible amount of genetic information. This will help Tim and his research partners determine the health of this environment, and it may even define this specific animal as a completely new species of mud puppy. Okay, so at this point we've collected the mud puppy's biometrics, the important science that Tim needed to collect for his research. But now it's time to answer the question that you've all been waiting for. Why is the mud puppy called a mud puppy? Well, to be honest with you, I have no idea. It is rumored that these amphibians will make a barking sound when they're captured. It would sound something like this, arf, 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 like a puppy. But when we caught this salamander, it made absolutely no sound at all. Trust me, if it had, we would have featured it. I guess in my opinion, they're simply called mud puppies because they are as cute as a puppy. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, it is time to get Mud Puppy back into the creek. Searching for a cryptic, alien-looking creature like the Mud Puppy proved to be a difficult process. This was partially because they're designed to blend in with their surroundings, but more so, it's the fact that this species is nowhere near as plentiful as it once was. Salamanders proudly hail as one of nature's most accurate bioindicators. Yet this mighty responsibility carries with it the very real tragedy that populations are being decimated due to human encroachment and environmental destruction. The watershed ecosystem is incredibly fragile, and even the slightest level of toxicity, an improperly disposed quart of oil, the spreading of fertilizer, or even litter from the window of a car can cause irreparable damage. Helping to spread this knowledge can make a world of difference for the future of these amphibians. And it's conservation specialists like Tim Brust who are putting in the effort to protect these pockets of untampered wilderness and the animals that call them home. This wild and wonderful state has so many cool animals. I can't wait to see what we'll find next. And in the meantime, Make sure to go back and watch our encounter with West Virginia's largest salamander, the Hellbender. And don't forget, subscribe and click the notification bell so you can join me and the crew on our next big adventure.